Holy smoke. How are you, Kevin? Yeah, doing well. How about yourself? Very good, thank you. Kevin Watts, uh, he's like a real expert. Oh, from yes. Lexus. <laughs> because that's what, what you do, right? I yeah, mean, that absolutely. you're specialized in that. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your website and uh, what, what you yeah, do. Yeah, sir. I started the Lexus Enthusiast uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, just writing Lexus about Lexus as a hobby. And it transitioned into what it is today. And uh, So 10 years about driving Lexus yep. exclusively? Yep, that's it. Wow, well, that's pretty amazing. Solid, yeah. So... You're one of those persons who have been really waiting to see this car in yeah, production, well, right? I mean, like everybody else is, but you probably know more and more, more probably more anxious to get it. Well, uh, you know what? I've been writing about it since uh, even before the Detroit Auto Show when it came out. Yeah, 2012, 11? Yeah. Well, yeah. So, you know, it started as the concept in 2012. But, uh, you know, and since then, you know, you follow the, the transition from... It, you know, will it be made or will it not be made? And now, yeah. you know, what was the name of the LF LF LC LF LC because yeah. the LF comes from the Lex, LFA, the inspiration for this car, yeah, sort of, it, right? It stands for uh, Lexus Future, yeah. So, uh, Lexus Future, and then I guess the luxury coupe is what LC stands for, yeah. So, here we are finally. I mean, driving the car. I also be, I, I also was in Detroit back then, and I also yeah. was pretty excited to see it. And so now we have driven it, both the regular... Uh, oh, I'm on the other side of the road. Because <laughs> it's funny because I was driving the, the right-hand side car that they have yeah, here. Yeah. And for a moment, I thought it, we were still in that and we were already in the UK or something. But anyway, so we drove both. Uh, what's, what was your first impression? Very solid, you know, very uh, solid and very refined, very luxurious. I, you know, you see it in the pictures, you see it at the auto show, you don't really get to experience the, yeah. the, what it's like on the road and, and that sense that you have uh, of driving a, a, you know, a very high end even, it, even the image of the car, I mean, sometimes yeah. when they're indoors, when they're the lights, they don't really yeah, show th their It doesn't truth. look as big. Exactly. You know, and, uh, you know, this car is going to come with uh, 21 inch wheels. Those, I mean, those are Range Rover wheels, right? I know. Like, it's, it's and that's the thing large. with the prototypes. In most prototypes, they put huge wheels, but they never put it into production. Yeah. And they, they really, not only in that aspect, but many other things about the car are pretty similar to the concept car. So, which is, I mean, they really came through with, with, with it. And uh, I think the design aspect of it, both exterior and interior, I think they, they hit all the marks, no? Well, I mean, they really did take so much of that original concept. And, and it was so well received. I think they almost felt like they had to keep it very similar. I mean, the funny thing about that, you know, talking with the chief engineer and everything, is that, you know, the car looks fundamentally the same, but all of the proportions are different. Yeah. So, you know, because the car, as it's designed, is a show car. So yeah, not bigger, really, wider, yeah, exactly. lower. And, and I mean, so they really had to kind of tighten it up a bit, but it does look, you know, identical. Yeah. And uh, once you get inside, I mean, the interiors are really, really beautiful. I really like the, the, the door panels with suede here and this uh, aluminum. It's every material that you see is what it looks like to be, like aluminum, like magnesium. No, what is it? Magnesium yeah, here. Magnesium alloy, Magnesium yeah. on the, uh, on the paddle, paddle shifters. shifters. And really every little aspect of it is really taken care of, like, with the, to the smallest detail, I think. Well, I mean, to think that every stitch in here is done by hand yeah. is... Uh, is something all on its own, right? So, so Lexus. I mean, uh, they're they're pretty bold and very humble, I guess. At the same time, saying that the words "boring" and Lexus will never be together in a sentence yeah, again. Yeah, right. And this is supposedly the beginning of that, right? Like every car is gonna look much more aggressive. I mean, the NX, the NX already is a little bit. The RX also. Yeah, yeah they're bo they're all very aggressive looking. But I think that this car is is maybe, you know, it drives much different than any other Lexus. But also, you know, it may, it, it may be like the, they say it's the next generation of Lexus, right? So they said that, you know, up until 2000, I think it was 2012, they had one driving style. The car drove, yeah. all, all the cars drove the same. And then they had the second generation, you know, with the GS, the new fourth generation GS, where they started to get a little bit more performance oriented. And now mm -hmm. this... Well, the RC sort of, also? Yeah, so that was all kind of included. And they, they say that this is like the third generation of Lexus driving. So talking about driving, you all drove it both on the track and on the road, uh, both the gas, which is a V8. Yeah. 4 liter, 471 horsepower, right? That's right. So, and 10, 10, 10 speed transmission, what do you think about it? I really like it. I think the car feels really light and like it really performs well. 
when you switch the race mode, uh, the Sport Plus mode, 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 mode here, it really like pushes it, in and you, you feel the difference. Well, I thought so too. I thought it was very uh, nimble. I felt as though it was very, uh, you know, as you turn the dial to change the different to different modes, I felt like the car kind of shrank a little bit, where it was feeling very responsive, very responsive on the track. And, you know, it, it was a, it's a really. Uh, it's really difficult when there's two different motors. You're trying to get a sense of both motors. Yeah, that happened to me too. I yeah. think when I jumped, I, I drove the, the gas engine car first and then the hybrid. And at the beginning, it was a little bit of a letdown because obviously it's not as powerful. Yeah, right. Uh, and, and, and so you think, oh, maybe it's not as good. But I think it's, you have to take it for what it is. The technology is pretty amazing in that uh, hybrid system. I mean, the, the torque was, it was much more responsive. Exactly. It was much more responsive out of a corner. But at the same time, you know, it was all, you know, in the straights, it was much slower. It took a lot longer to get up to top speed. Yeah, on the, on the straight and the long straight out of the main one, I only reached 205 kilometers. And while on the gas in, car, I reached... Uh, like 220? 220, yeah. 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 So, yeah, see, I, I topped out at around, with the hybrid, maybe, yeah, around 200. So this is the hybrid and uh, obviously the V6 engine doesn't produce as much, as much as, or nicer yeah. noise as the V8 But I think it's pretty decent still, no? And they, they hybrid, say they enhance, not they enhance, they eliminate some of the frequencies that you don't really want to hear from them Yeah, I think that hybrids maybe have a drone and sometimes uh, have like a consistent sound with the CPT But you know, with this new transmission that they put in this sort of virtual 10 gear transmission um, it definitely would uh, definitely would change the sort of that that droning that you might get from a, a standard hybrid so if you have to make a prediction you think uh, how, how well received how well this car is going to be received by the Lexus uh, oh, well, community I mean everybody's looking forward to it right it's definitely a, a halo car within the Lexus lineup. It's a much more accessible version of, of, of the LFA supercar. I mean still it's you know it's gonna it's gonna be at least you know six figures. Yeah that's what they say yeah, around a hundred. I would say between ninety five and you know hundred and five as a you know as a bracket to say how much it's gonna cost. But at the same time you know the LFA was three hundred and seventy five thousand. Yeah. Only this 500 is, yeah, exactly. of so, those. And they're talking about selling 400 a month here in the U.S. So, so in a month and a half, they're going to sell more of these when yeah, they sell exactly. <laughs> In a month and a week, right? So, so that's a success story, yeah. I guess. So, Kevin, once again, uh, your website again, so can people like follow it. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much yeah, for, for sharing sure. the ride here in Spain. And um, we're going to keep uh, driving here now under the speed limit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to follow that. Thank uh, you, okay. Yeah, for sure. Thank <laughs> you.